Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, building another meatloaf here uh, for Monday. This is number 27. Uh, I got a couple new things to show you guys. Um, you probably already noticed the, uh, the new cover art. Um, this is a special thanks goes out to Quinn Berry uh, for helping me with that. He, uh, he likes doing some graphic design stuff. He's helped, um, I believe he's helped Keith Fenner, uh, Adam, and now and now me, I'm kind of uh, straggling along here. Anyway, he's done some pretty cool stuff, and I uh, hope you guys like the new cover art. And thanks very much, Quinn. Appreciate that. Um, we got some um, uh, viewer packages uh, to open up and take a look at, and uh, we got a box from uh, from A Bomb Seventy Nine. So uh, I'm curious to see what's in there. Um, the other thing is, oh yeah, we're gonna. Um, start working on this uh, x-ray transformer plug for uh, a friend of mine in Australia, uh, Nick, uh, otherwise known as the Energy Fabricator. He does uh, electrical engineering projects and high voltage stuff. Uh, he and I uh, kick around on email a little bit and uh, he needs a little bit of help with a kind of an oddball plug um, for the top of an x-ray transformer that has insulating gas inside it. Um, so it's basically a brass plug. It's a fancy brass plug with an O-ring and, uh, and some kind of non-standard threads. So uh, we're going to help him out with that. Um, we get to make a little, uh, uh, a simple thread gauge to gauge the threads that we're going to single point and um, we're going to cut some metric threads and uh, do that and see what else. I don't know, we'll figure out something else in there. And uh, a couple of guys have been asking about uh, project-based stuff. And I've been spending a bit of time on the computer doing some uh, design for the etching press. So I'm getting ready to make a big steel order and um, uh, really start diving into some of the bigger parts on, uh, on the etching press. Um, so stay tuned for that. And uh, let's suit up and let's go do some work. Okay, so the first one we have here... <clears throat> comes to us from uh, it, also known as the Hackmaster, um, Scott Lundy, and he's in Southern California. And he sent me a little note here. Um, he says this is a calibration standard here, uh, and it's a uh, Ace Hardware uh, paint stick with some uh, some precision engraving on it. Um, and he says. Uh, um, I rate this quality of this tool somewhere between the new China Starrett's and the Harbor Freight and uh, garbage range. So uh, anyway, this is uh, this is what showed up here, and uh, I'm a little scared to open it. I'm uh, worried about breaking the warranty here, but like all good mechanics, um, what we do is we take things apart first and then uh, um, look at the instruction manual, right? So I'm just going to ignore that sign. And we're going to see what we got in here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Excellent. Now, this is great because he put his name in it. Uh, Scott Lundy, Lundy, uh, Ojai, California. And it's a little, uh, it's a little die maker square, kind of like the one uh, Daniel Jansen made. Uh, it's got metric on it. And he's got an inch blade. Oh, look at this. So he's got his name in the, uh, in the scale, too. That's great. Um, hopefully you can see that. It's pretty cool. He's got real engraving on there. That's excellent. So this is, uh, it's not uh, etched. It's machined, it looks like. So uh, looking at the text, text, I'm guessing Scott has a CNC. Anyway, this is a total surprise. It just showed up uh, in the mail. And... Um, Wow, pretty cool. Let's uh, let's check it out here. Lock it down. Very good. Okay, let's. So here's the ultimate test, right? With a square, is swapping the blades out, right? And how hard? Man, look at that. It went right in. Beautiful, beautiful. It's good. It's got a little heft to it. Wow, this looks like it's even ground here. Yeah, I'd say he ground that, and it looks like he ground it at an angle too, which is uh, which is a good technique, you know. Um, instead of along the length of it, the wheel contact is uh, is shorter. 
um, but not so short that you're uh, um, um, pushing against the uh, the magnetic holding force. So uh, it's a good compromise. Um, pretty good. So my only uh, uh, we'll have to check this out for uh, for squareness here. Um, okay, the Neuralink could use a little bit of help, but uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Maybe that was to attract my attention down here. It's got my name on it, Tom Lipton there, um, down at the bottom. Oh, that's pretty good. So, uh, Scott, that is just absolutely wonderful. So let's uh, let's check it out here. Okay, looks like it uh, agrees with the standard. Let's put the other blade in. We got one more blade here, 30 and a 45. That's interesting. I don't think I have one that's got a 30 on it. Um, usually they have the drill point angle on them, so 29 degrees or whatever. Okay, well, it went right in there. Oh, okay, here's the 45. Okay, 45 checks out. Maybe get the 30 on there somewhere. All right, well, I got it in the wrong way for that. How do we get that up there? <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, I'm stoked. This is great. I love it. Thank you very much, Scott. And uh, that'll go with uh, um, the rest of my little die maker square there. Thank you very much, my friend. So uh, thanks for. Uh, it's always nice to get a uh, you know something handmade. It's just uh, uh, it's just extra special. Thank you. Okay, so the next one comes to us from a um, um, longtime viewer now, uh, one of the first people to sign up, um, and this is John Neugbauer, and he's in New York, and uh, John has way too much time on his hands, okay, because this is the kind of stuff that he sends me here. Um, he he's, does artwork, and... Uh, <laughs> That's Mr. Wizard there, so uh, for you guys are wondering there. And uh, so he sends me a, a note here. Hey, Tom, and close feet, please find some steel dust from um, my time machine back from uh, when men were men and real men who carried uh, knives into space. Enjoy. So look at this. He did this artwork, and here they got their little sheath knives on there. They're on some other planet. Like I said, John's got way too much time on his hands, and... Um, um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, this isn't the first one that I've gotten. What he sent me, he and I were talking about uh, uh, aftershave. Um, and this is kind of an old, this is like total old school aftershave here. And, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, I'd go with my dad to the barber shop and uh, uh, get a haircut, right? And um, the barber, you know, they'd, they'd put the, uh, the hot towel on your head, you know, and and um, they'd give you, um, they'd give you a haircut and they'd use a razor behind your ears to trim and everything. And then they'd dust you with powder and give you a little, uh, a little um, uh, aftershave too. And many times it was this, uh, this vegetal um, uh, scent uh, aftershave. And so this is totally brings back memories. Yep. Uh, being in a barber shop, you know, with a bunch of old guys uh, sitting there reading the newspaper, and some of them were smoking cigars and stuff like that. And uh, um, you'd wait your turn, and uh, and he'd get up in the chair, and and uh, and and it was a whole, it's a ritual. It was a whole ritual. So uh, you guys that haven't been to an old school barber shop in a while, um, I highly recommend it. It it's just fun, and it's well worth the the, the twenty. 20 or 25 dollars to get a little trim and just get taken care of and um, you know shoot the shoot the crap with the uh, the barber and uh, and uh, come out smelling uh, wonderful anyway uh, John thank you very much uh, this brings back memories and uh, I totally appreciate it and uh, uh, dude man uh, you need to go back to work okay uh, <laughs> you got way too much time on your hands anyway thank you my friend Okay, so now we got the uh, uh, this mystery box, 
and uh, it's a big old Starrett box here. Now, I'm looking at the return address, and the, uh, the return address is Florida, and I'm pretty sure that uh, um, Starrett doesn't have a, uh, have a branch in, uh, in Florida, so uh, I'm wondering uh, if this might be from Adam. So uh, I think that's from Adam. Alright, let's see here. Let's see what we got here. We got something there. Something there. Nothing. Something there. Get all this stuff out of here. Oh, and there's something heavy there. Okay. Make sure. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, let's, uh, let's start with the little ones here. Let's see what we got here. Do a little surgery here. Oh, okay. So these are uh, these are tap drivers here. A uh, little Morse taper uh, uh, tap drivers. Or I thought these were tap drivers. I have a square in the bottom. Oh, hey, yeah, they do. Yeah, so I think those are tap drivers. Let's see them very well. Let's see what else we got here. Now that looks more like a tap driver to me, so. 716D6. Yeah, okay, these are Collis uh, uh, tap drivers, I think. Okay, cool. And uh, they look like number two Morse taper. Thank you very much, Adam. All right, let's see this one here. We got an, oh, there's a, a 5C collet. Oh, 2 millimeter. Okay, well, that'll come in handy. Doesn't look uh, too used. Um, always use 5C collets. Great, thank you, sir. Metric, no less. Okay, moving along. All, all good things come in McMaster bags, so uh, that's all you got to remember. Oh, okay, yeah, he mentioned this. So he got a bunch of uh, these um, kind of aircraft length uh, extension drills here, and um, so he uh, put a handful of these together for me. So uh, uh, these are these are always kind of handy and useful. So okay, so next thing here, uh oh, <laughs> big boys grab bag. Uh oh, I'm worried now. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's a whole damn tool set. Look at that. You know how much I like hammers. Got wrenches. Hey, that one even works. That's pretty good. Pinchers. What's the matter? Hey, Adam, what are you going to do, man? You're giving me all your tools, bud. The, the, your truck toolkit's all cleaned out now. What are you going to do? Wow, that actually works. Look at that. Oh, this one sits on the uh, sits on the ground. That's pretty good. <laughs> Screwdriver. Oh, hey, it's not even. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's not a double ender. Oh well. All right, Adam. Pretty good. <laughs> we'll put that to good use. Thanks, bud. <laughs> okay, so next thing, let's open up the next one here. And uh, I, I had an inkling this was coming because uh, Adam and I have been talking about it. And uh, this is a, uh, a real nice uh, Starrett uh, 98 uh, precision level uh, that's in need of calibration here. And um, um, Adam and I did a little horse trade in there. I sent him a, a, a big indicator that he, he could use. And uh, he asked if I... Uh, I had a level, and I do have one level uh, that's similar to this, and you guys have seen that, that's that South Bend level. Um, but it's really nice to have two when you're doing uh, machine leveling. You have one uh, in each direction, then you can look at them both simultaneously, and you don't have to 
keep swapping these back and forth. Um, so this is the newer style. It's got the involute groove here, which is curved inward instead of just a radius like that. A um, little bit rusty on the bottom, but that's not a big deal. We can lap that out, no sweat. Same thing on the sides here. We can clean that up pretty easily. Um, it's in great shape. And these are good to, uh, I think they resolve about two thousandths of an inch per foot, about 50 microns in 300 millimeters, something like that. And um, um, so we'll get this one uh, tuned up and then uh, maybe we'll make a little box for it or something like that and uh, to protect it. And uh, that'll go with my, my little South Bend level that's about the same size. So uh, um, actually, just grab it. talking about it. Uh, very similar. Okay, almost the same length. Uh, this one's lower. Um, you know, having a deep frame like this probably makes this a little more rigid, but uh, um, so anyway, now I can put one one way and one the other way and uh, read them simultaneously, so that's kind of nice. Thanks, Adam. That's great. I'll I'll clean that all up and uh, and uh, use the heck out of it. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I cleaned it up. It had some rust on it, um, so we kind of went over it. Some little marks here in the uh, in the casting, but no big deal. It all lapped out pretty nice. Uh, I lapped it with some 600 grit paper and um, uh, just kind of cleaned it up. Um, I haven't calibrated it yet. I'll just wait till the first time I want to use it, then I'll calibrate it. Um, but uh, I think I'll figure out a box for this thing. Anyway, uh, very nice trade. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Adam. I'm very happy with the, with the trade. So uh, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's this uh, X-ray transformer plug that uh, we're going to make for, uh, for Nick. Uh, the energy fabricator. Uh, and basically it's just a brass hex plug. Um, it's got a male thread on the uh, on this section here and it's an M18 by 1 which is a fairly fine thread for M18. Um, and then uh, we have an, an O-ring. Uh, he wants a seal between um, uh, the plug and the, um, and the top of the transformer. Uh, I guess there's an insulating gas inside the uh, inside the transformer might be um, sulfur hexafluoride or, uh, or just uh, compressed air um, as an insulating gas or it might be something else I'm not sure he didn't say um, anyway uh, um, and then it has an ID thread which is an 8th 28 uh, British standard um, pipe tap yeah oh pipe taper I think it is yeah pipe tape. British standard pipe taper um, which differ slightly from the US version uh, which is 8th 27 this little tap here I had to buy one uh, I didn't have one um, I don't think I've ever tapped one of these and I'll tell you that uh, I'm gonna put a piece of tape around this and, and cover it up when I put it in my uh, pipe tap drawer um, that way I don't inadvertently grab it uh, you know when you're in a hurry or something like that and uh, so um, it's one of those uh, slightly dangerous taps uh, being one thread per inch um, different than the standard, you'd probably never be able to spot that just by eye. The, the difference is pretty small. So uh, um, anyway, so that's the uh, that's the project there, and uh, we're going to make a thread gauge that simulates the uh, the transformer top here. Um, that way, when we single point this thread, we can fit it to uh, we can get a nice fit on that and uh, on a tapped hole. So. Okay, anyway, that's the project, and uh, let's get going. All right, so here's our, uh, our plug gauges here. So we're going um, to make our uh, thread gauge for our M18 by 1 um, uh, male thread that we're going to cut with a delay, the single point. So what we'll do is we'll drill first, and this is a 21 32nd, and then uh, we're going to get out to our... Um, um, 669. Uh, we'll bore it to 669 and then we'll check it instead of using an uh, inside mic or um, bore gauge or whatever we'll use plug gauges to check it since I have these now and um, 
uh, we can use them to check. So what I'm going to do is first, we're going to find the, uh, the 669, which should be right there. And I verify it right there. And then what I usually do is, is I just put a, and it's silly, but I put a smiley face on it. That's the way I know that's my target. And I'm, this is smaller coming up to that size and then this is larger so that's a little that's 1,000 smaller and that's 1,000 larger than my target so uh, when that goes in I know I'm good and I can go ahead and tap my hole so uh, that's how we're gonna measure that uh, that particular hole all right so let's go do that all right so we get the uh, um, pilot hole drilled in the thread gauge that we're gonna make uh, so we can check our thread nicely uh, now we're just going to open it up with a silver and Deming drill. And then uh, we'll bore it uh, in a minute. And you see how I'm bumping it there? That's basically just to get the chips to break nicely. You know, shorter chips are, are just easier to deal with um, across the board pretty much. And when I see it come out, I just give it a little, I just stop feeding it and it breaks the chip. probably plenty deep. I'm just going to go to where my pilot uh, drill ends. This is a blind hole by the way. Well, that's plenty darn deep there guys. Should be coming to the bottom. There it is. Alright. Okay. Get this out of the way. Then we're going to go in and we're going to use a little boring bar here to, uh, to <clears throat> open that up a little bit. Let me uh, change the camera around. Alright, so we're going to come up, we're going to calibrate our tool um, on this end face and then the, uh, the, the ID of the drilled hole there. Let's do the Z first, just because. And then I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna take a teeny bit out of the hole. Just enough to kind of clean it up. Get rid of that drilled surface. Okay. Alright, that looks pretty good. And then um, so what I'll do here is just a little different than I normally do. So let's just get a caliper dimension to start with so we know kind of where we are. So we're 664, 665, somewhere in there. So I got my plug gauges out, so I'm going to grab a 664. There's a 664, and we're going to try that in there. Okay, it's not quite going. How about a 663? Okay, so it's starting to go. So I'm going to call that hole 663. And uh, so what I'm going to do is calibrate this boring bar. Uh, point, point 0.663. Enter. And of course, I'm going to do the bozo trick and uh, double check my number on my pin. 663, 663. Okay. So now we can uh, go ahead and bore that to the, uh, the tap drill size properly. And the other nice thing about boring this is um, that bore axis now is on the center of rotation. So uh, there's no or not much run out between the bore and the, uh, uh, the clamping surface. All right. So let's. Uh, 
Let's take a pass out of there. And our target is um, the 669. So we don't have much to come out. Let's do 665 to start with. And we'll go to depth first. This should be 665. Uh, let's check. Yeah. It's got the it's got the piston fit. <laughs> Alright, so 665, so the DRO seems to be uh, calibrated pretty well there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take that out to uh, finish size. Our 669, right? Yeah, 669. pin. Okay, piston fit. Okay, happy. Okay, so we're set up to tap here. Um, this is our 18 millimeter by one tap um, that we're going to tap with. And I'm just going to hand tap this instead of power tapping it because it's a four flute tap. And uh, I don't want to chip it or break it or do anything since uh, um, I bought this tap special for this job. Ooh, boy. This just helps me get it started nice and straight. Actually, I probably could have power tapped this, uh, thinking about it now the, uh, and feeling it. These, this one millimeter pitch is not very uh, deep, so there's, the chip is uh, pretty manageable. But that's okay. I don't mind doing this. Not the first time, right? I think I'm plenty deep there. I think I bumped into the bottom of my hole. Let me get that out of there. Okay, and I probably said it before, but I, I always like to take the tap wrench off at the last bit. Uh, that way it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, well, come on you bugger. It doesn't pull that last thread out sideways uh, from the weight of the uh, the weight of the tap wrench. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, get that out of there. Okay, so now we got a a thread gauge that we can use for our uh, um, our single point threading, so we can fit it to that nicely. Oh, I forgot actually. The other thing we can do with these that's kind of neat is, um, so this is our O-ring that we're going to use for this uh, uh, X-ray transformer plug uh, to seal the gas. 
um, and it's going to be a face seal, as I mentioned before. Um, but these are kind of nominal diameters in the books, right? What we want is we want to stretch this a little bit, um, and then uh, we're going to have a face seal that it'll sit against. So, you know, it's it's kind of hard to measure squishy round things like that, right? So what we can do is just fish around in here until we find the the right. It's not bad. Okay, that's a little loose. Okay, so that's so that's kind of a a retentive size there. So that if we have a, we're not stretching it very much, but uh, it goes on and it stays, right? So what do we got there? What is it? 687, okay. So that's probably a good um, um, inner diameter for the uh, the groove, for the face groove for uh, uh, this particular uh, O-ring, okay? Actually, I'm gonna leave that out and I'll write that number down. Well, of course, nothing simple around here. I went to change the machine over to uh, do the metric threading and I put the gear on and I got all set up but uh, this one last lever that I needed to engage into the D position wouldn't go so um, anyway something had dropped off on the inside I don't quite know what's going on but uh, I pretty much got it off now and uh, I'm working on uh, I'm popping this off the final bit So I, I have a diagram that I looked at, so I know what to expect in here. So, uh, well, <laughs> I don't quite know what I know what to expect. All right, I think that side's free. Okay. Okay, okay there's the mechanism. Straight down. Let me get a look at it there. So this isn't full of oil, believe it or not, um, which kind of surprised me actually. Um, it's got a wicking system that kind of uh, you fill this, and it's got wicks, and it drips. So it's kind of a drip feed, <laughs> drip feed and run out kind of system. Okay, so this is the gear that we're looking at here. And it's a dog, and it slides on the shaft, and it engages with that set. Well, that seems to be sliding okay. And then this is the the main gearbox change. Actually, you know, I'll move the camera so you guys can see in here. But uh, this all looks pretty happy to me. Let's take a look at this. Oh. You know what? I think I figured it out. Eh, okay, let me uh, let me change the camera around a little bit. And you guys can get a look in here, see what this looks like. So this is how you get to know your machine. <laughs> We're good friends now. I've been inside this thing all over the place. Um, you shouldn't you shouldn't be afraid to do this kind of stuff. In particular, if you have a book. Um, it's just mechanical bits, so uh, you know we're mechanical guys, so uh, you should be able to figure it out as long as you um, do no harm. Uh, you know you don't want to drive wedges into something that uh, doesn't want to come apart. So if you're gentle and uh, and use pr uh, proper mechanical technique, um, then you know you should be fine. So uh, okay, let me move the camera, and then we'll take a look at this thing. Okay, so this is this is the gear that uh, uh, that didn't want to shift. So it's splined on that side and splined on that side. So when it's in that position, it drives through, and then when it's in this position, it separates here and drives through this uh, counter shaft. You can see that difference there. So it's got an internal spline on it, so it picks that gear up and drives direct there. So this gear needed to be in that position uh, to do the metric threading. 
and you can see here that it it seems to be operating fine okay and um but uh i think i see what's wrong in the uh in the house or the the lever uh, mechanism so uh we'll get that up on the bench and uh, we'll get a look at it okay so we this is the outer cover with the levers on it uh for the gearbox and this is that this is the shift lever here that moves back and forth and engages that gear and shoves it sideways. Well, you can see we got a little problem right here. Look at that. So, Mr. Taper Pin is not doing his job. So, we got it. Yeah. So, I guess it had enough enough play in it, you know, cuz this was loose. See that? It's got I don't know, what is that? 10 or 15 degrees, I mean, 10 degrees of, uh, of wiggle, and uh, it's not doing its, uh, not doing its job. So it's got a set screw, so apparently, okay, so that's going in now. I'll tap that back in, I'll reseat the set screw, clean this a little bit, kind of check, uh, check a few things out here. And then uh, we'll put it back and see if that uh, see if that gear shifts now. Huh. Kind of an interesting mechanism. It's got a rack and pinion on a dovetail kind of to slide this. And then this is a uh, this is a gate. It's basically a locking gate that locks it in the different uh, um, locks it in the different uh, gear settings. So. Okay, so let's tap that in and uh, tighten that set screw up and see what we can do. Right, let's see what we got here. Let's first, let's tap this, get this thing seated properly. Oh yeah. Boy. Yeah, that thing's been wagging around for a while maybe. Feels kind of tight now. Uh, not that one. It's always the one, the one down from the one you grab, right? So now what I don't know is, I wonder if that is uh, locking down on that taper pin. Well, that's, <laughs> that's stiffer. I can still feel the detent. It's definitely stiffer than it was. Stiffer than I'm used to, let's just put it that way. But I think that's okay. One, two, that's the second one. Huh. I kind of don't want to, I kind of don't want to uh, make it loose. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'll put a little grease on the sides of that, just to give it a little lube, and uh, I might lubricate this a little bit, just for, uh, just for funds, and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so I got it <clears throat> back together, and uh, it seems to be acting normally now. And this lever does what it's supposed to do now. It shifts between the two the two positions there. So I'm going to do a, uh, a test uh, a test piece at uh, one millimeter pitch and make sure everything uh, looked copacetic there. <clears throat> and um, um, then we will move on to the uh, that uh, x-ray plug. So stay tuned. 
Okay, so I think we're kind of <laughs> back to what I would call square one. <laughs> so let's, uh, we're just going to do a little test uh, cut here and uh, um, see what we get. Threading on a uh, inch lead screw machine. I'm just going to go in five thousandths here. Um, the half nut needs to stay engaged. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Get my uh, now. I'm just going to back that up. So I've locked into one number there, and I need to leave it in that number. All right. Let me get a uh, screw pitch gauge, and we'll uh, we'll check her out. Okay. Let's see here. Yep, that's it. Let's just take another pass just for fun. Um, I'm just going to go in 15 here. And uh, see, I'm engaged. Okay. I should just pick up right where I left off. Cross your fingers. Okay. Looks like it's tracking nicely. It gives me a little deeper groove to set that in. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like it works. So, you know, I want to double check it before I put all the work into the uh, the the actual plug. And you don't want to botch the thread. The thread's almost the last thing, right? So you, you're gonna have O-ring groove. You're gonna have all the stuff done. And then if you blow the thread, then you're really pissed. So okay. So now we get the real stuff. <laughs> 